<clears throat> All right, you guys. The truth is, I'm probably going to teach this lesson in class, and um, this will just be up there for your information. Um, I'm going to do the first couple pages. We're talking about solving equations, and solving equations by guess and check work, or by working backwards. So there's a couple ways to do it. Um, it says an equation is a mathematical sentence, right, that uses an equal sign. So we can see this in equation, and we can see this in equation. All right. There's a method we have called guess and check. Guess and check method involves guessing at values that, that may make your variable true or not true. Um, so, if the resulting equation is a true statement, then the value you guessed is the solution of the equation. If it's not true, then you didn't guess the right value. Um, so, here's an example of how we would do that, right? We could say, hey, let's solve the equation x minus x equals 4. So, you would think of something reasonable, right? We, we could say, hey, something minus x equals 4. It's not going to be a very big number. In fact, we obviously know it's 10 because 10 minus 6 is 4 if x is 10, right? But they're saying, let's guess 11. So if I plug in 11, right, 11 minus 6 is actually 5, and it's not a solution. No, it's not a solution, right? 11 was too high. We, we, we can see that 5 is bigger than 4, right? So if I go through this and my guess is wrong, come over here, you know what? If 11 is too high, I'm going to guess 10. 10 minus 6 is 4. All right, 10 minus 6 is actually 4, right? I'm just working down this left side. 4 happens to equal 4. Is 10 a solution? Yes. All right. So using use the work backwards method to find um, the solution for this equation. All right. So what I could do is this, all right? I could say, hey, you know what? What is, if, if a number minus 6 is 4, then... 4 plus that number must be the answer, right? 4 plus 10 must be the answer. Is this the value? Well, I'll see 10 minus 6 equals 4. Then, well, that's yes. 10 minus 6 is 4. Which method do you think is more efficient? Well, you know what? There's either guessing, which took me all this, or working backwards, saying, hey, you know what? I can, if I can just add 6 to both sides right here, and I'll get x by itself. And that's 10, so I would say the working backwards. Working backwards. All right. And the reason it's more efficient, the reason that's more efficient, right, is because you never get wrong answers, right? Never do we get wrong answers. I'll never end up using all this work just to say, hey, no. We're always going to get the wrong, right answer if we work backwards. All right. So we're going to keep going. That's a whole page. There's not too many pages. So if you didn't do this in class with me yesterday, we are in good shape right here. All right. So the solutions of an equation is a value that makes the equation true. All right. To determine the solution of an equation, we are going to use properties of equality. The concept of properties of equality is that we don't remove the equal sign if we can do these operations, right? As long as I add things to both sides, subtract things to both sides of the equal sign, right? Multiply things to both sides of the equal sign, divide both sides of the equal sign by the same thing, it'll always be true. So look, addition property literally says this. You can add the same number to both sides of an equation. That means the left side of the equal sign and the right side of the equal sign. If 3 equals 3, and I add 2 to both sides, then you know what? It's still equal. 5 equals 5 because I did the same thing to both sides. The values now are always equal, right? If I have A equals B, if I add C to both sides, it's still equal. Subtraction just says, hey, no, you know what? We can't just add. We can subtract, right? If 7 equals 7, as long as I subtract 5 from both sides, the final equation, 2 equals 2, is going to be true. I can do the same thing with multiply. You're like, if 3 equals 3, as long as I multiply both sides by, in this case, 4, it's still true. 3 times 4 is 12 equals 12. 15 is 15. As long as I divide both sides by the same amount, in this case, 3, it's still equal. 5 equals 5. What's really nice about that is it allows us to solve equations, right? So this says, hey, 3x minus 2 equals 6. Well, let's go ahead and 
add 2. Can you see why we're adding 2? Because the 2 gets rid of that negative 2, right? These cross off, and I get 3x equals, well, 6 plus 2 is 8. And then I'll have to do a solve for x, right? Well, that's 3 times x. So I go to myself, well, how do I get rid of times 3? Well, the inverse operation, that's a word you got to get used to. Of multiplication is division, so I divide by 3. And I've got x equals 8 thirds, and I'm done. Let's do that down here, right? This says 1 half c plus 4 equals 10. Well, i got to undo plus 4. It, unlike the order of operations, where instead, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, right? Where when you're undoing, you do it in the reverse order. It's just more efficient. So in this case, you undo addition before you undo multiplication. So that plus 4, I remove by saying minus 4, minus 4. And these cross off. And I have 1 half x equals 10 minus 4 is 6. Well, there's 1 half of, well, that's not x, is it? That's z. You can write that like this. You could say z divided by 2, right? Well, that's, what's the opposite? Well, there's two ways to think about it. Instead of dividing by 2, I can multiply both sides by 2, right? Or you can multiply by the reciprocal. 1 half is really half of, so I multiply, I flip it upside down, multiply by 2. So that is the multiplication property of equality. Well, 2 times 1 half goes away to z, and 6 times 2 is 12. Well, that's a whole lot quicker, isn't it? And that's really, all right, that is really the working backwards method. Um, just because this is really easy, I'm going to do a tiny bit more. All right, it says, what is the goal when solving one variable equations? Well, it's to get to get the variable by itself. I am never going to be that long-winded about this again. We're going to use the word isolate. We're going to isolate the variable. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to underline one for you, All right? So if you look at this guy right here, let me get a little bit closer. All right. This says 5x minus 10 is 20. First thing I'm going to do is undo subtraction by adding. I get 5x equals 30. That's 5 times x, so I'm going to divide. The inverse of multiplication is division. These guys cancel off, leaving me x. 30 divided by 5 is 6. So I want you to try 4. I want to make one more video on just this last little page, 7 and 8, and we'll talk from there.